before we launch into this session, I think it's important to note some of the conversations we've all been having around the halls, and so much has been focused on what governments should do to develop and deploy artificial intelligence. And just to consider where we're at here in the UAE, this is the first country to decide that AI was so significant that they needed to create the position of an AI minister. It is also the country that created the ATRC in 2020, which is the Advanced, Techno sorry, Advanced Technology Research Council, of which His Excellency is the Secretary General. And before we start to sort of delve into the exciting pioneering work you've been doing, I think it would be important to just explain the umbrella of the ATRC, because it's got three pillars within it, and they've all created some really exciting ventures. Thank you for the intro. Um, a quick background of what, what we do in ATRC. So we were created through a decree in the summer of 2020. So just as COVID was becoming quite interesting and, and revealing in how it's going to impact our lives. And ATRC has three key mandates. The umbrella mandate, of course, is driving and helping Abu Dhabi and the UAE move to the knowledge economy really leveraging everything done in the last 50 years in terms of building infrastructure and building services and building a number of other sectors and really helping the journey of UAE in the knowledge economy. So we have TII, which is the Technology Innovation Institute, around 10 research centers, everything from quantum research center to crypto to autonomous to biotech and others. We have Aspire, which is the program management office that really talks to clients and talks to the research center and tries to identify which are the most interesting research topics to address, since at the end of the day, we are an applied research center. We are not an academic research center. We are here to solve very specific problems. And last but not least is Venture One, which is as we work on our research, and again, as I mentioned, it's applied research, it's to drive fixing a problem. If we are successful in our research and we reach a stage where we have a solution that we can demo and it shows its, its ability to meet its goals, Venture One is there then to take it to license it or to create a startup out of it in, in, in this regard. And we own all of that journey. And within the last three years that we started, we now have over a thousand researchers in the UAE within our research centers. We have over a hundred universities globally that are on our payroll for the next two to three years that are working on our problem statements. And we have over 150 research projects that we are engaged in and we are really moving extremely fast on them. I mean, let's take the research pillar here. And one of the most well-known, I think, uh, products from that has been Falcon, which is a huge foundation large language model. And if you consider sort of the world's biggest LLMs, the ones that we all know, they've been created by some of the biggest companies in the world, the tech companies. We're talking about Meta, Google, Microsoft, and OpenAI. And then you have one that's been created by a government, which is a, a very interesting concept in itself. But also, what's so interesting about this specific one is you've decided to make it open source. Why is that? I think we had an interesting journey. And I think it starts with the point of having leadership that has a very clear vision. And we are chaired by His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad bin Zayed, which is the executive chairman of Abu Dhabi Executive Council and the chairman of ATRC. And the vision that says we are committed to research, we are committed to technology, and hence we have room to also start experimenting. So the experiment in the AI and how important AI was, we started playing with large language models sometime in the summer of 2020. And at that time, ChatGPT was not out, so we had not heard of ChatGPT at all. But we started funding the internal teams to work on that concept, although frankly, we did not know where it's going to head. But we knew it's an interesting technology to play with. Very soon after ChatGPT came out and we were like, oh, okay, I guess this technology is more interesting than what we thought it would be. And then that's when we started moving. And in April, May of 2023, we started having Falcon, the 40 billion parameter model. And this was a small experiment within the research team that we had. And I remember the research team mentioned saying, we think we have a good model. We think it performs well globally. You know, what do we think we'll do about it? And my view was, I'm no expert in AI. I don't know whether what you're telling me is true or not and how good we are. 
let's do an experiment. Let's release this open source. Let the world decide how good our AI is. And if it's good, or somehow good, we'll probably gain some visibility to help people work with us more in the AI field. Now, two, one week later, after releasing it in open source, we were ranked by an independent site called Hugging Face as the best performing open source AI model globally, beating every other player in the market in that regard. So this was, OK, I guess we can build something over here. That's when we started further taking the journey of building the next larger model of Falcon. And that was the Falcon 180 billion model. We released it in September. Sometime in the middle, Facebook launched Llama 2, another great model. They became the number one model. In September, we again surpassed every other open source model globally with Falcon 180 billion model. So that showed we, as a small player, we're not the US, we're not China, we are a small player, but we are a small player that is extremely focused on what we want to do and extremely determined in getting there that we are able to play with the larger boys. And I think that set the journey, and we'll talk about that, I think, in the next questions, set the whole journey of what our journey is in AI and how credible we are in the AI space. I mean, it's an interesting concept. You're really looking at democratizing AI in a way and also encouraging other people to try and develop the technology very quickly. Talk to me about one of the um, new announcements you have about the Falcon Foundation, because that's going to encourage even more open source projects. Absolutely. Our view when it comes to AI is the following. I think if we look at how the internet age has evolved, and at least I'm old enough in this room that have lived before the internet and after the, the, the internet. And what we saw in the internet age and the boom that the whole internet brought in is there were a lot of technologies that very few technology players ended up controlling. And although it was great on one side because technology was concentrated with large players that can invest in technology. The downside, at least in a certain element of technology, we had to give up our entire data to these companies, where they control our data, they have access to a lot of set of our data to be able to access the technology that they're having. I think it's good, but it had a downside. In the AI space, we were concerned that if we let things move in their own trajectory, mm. in their own momentum, do we really want to choose between leveraging advanced AI and giving out complete control of our data so that that AI can process the data? I don't know. I don't think it's the right direction. Do we want to use AI in a black box that very few players control? And like what happened in social media in the last two or three years where if I didn't like what you're saying or what someone else was saying, Someone in the social media company can wake up one day, they can turn our voice down, or they can turn our voice up. I don't know whether we want this in AI, because AI is going to make much more decisions than social media app is going to do. So combining whether we're going to give up our data or not, combining whether we want AI in a black box that someone will fully control, and at the same time, really controlling the destiny of how we're going to leverage AI, we were determined to ensure that there is a parallel option available, other than proprietary AI, AI should be made available for everyone. AI should be a major equalizer. And that's what drove us to release Falcon in the early days as open source. And we announced yesterday the creation of Falcon uh, Foundation model, very similar to the Linux uh, model and uh, in, in Linux Foundation, where it's an independent body. It will manage Falcon and Falcon Future Generation, and as UAE, we are going to contribute to this foundation over $300 million of further future model upgrades that will happen, and it's free for everyone. Any country, any company, any individual that wants to use that Falcon base will use it for free. That combined with what we are going to do now under AI71, which is the more commercial company building medical, education, and other sectors, it's all built on you, the country, you, the company, you, the individual, should have control on your data, regardless of the AI you use. And I think that's the future that we see, and that's a killer key part of us setting up the foundation. 
I mean, I see one small issue with being a trailblazer in AI, and that is the disruption. Because when we look at technical sort of revolutions around the world, this one's happening really rapidly. How concerned is the UAE about the disruption this will create in the workforce? I think whether we all like it or not, uh, AI is here to stay and AI is moving fast. Now, whether we can all stay very concerned about it or not, the current spike in AI, at least this generation of AI, large language models or generative models, has only happened in the last 14 months since ChatGPT really brought it to the world. If you're going to take a year or two to decide policy, this train has seriously left the station and you will be behind. I think the opportunity is, will there be a disruption? In every technological revolution, there's been a disruption. I think the time now is, especially for a lot of the growth countries, a lot of the developing countries, it's a golden opportunity to act as a multiplier effect for your capabilities. Let's take a good example. If you are a, an individual lawyer or you are a guy that has ambitions to produce, I don't know, movies or whatever it may be, one lawyer today combined with AI can act in the power to serve other companies as if you are a 50-man law firm. The AI can dramatically amplify your capability. So suddenly it's going to create a lot of small companies that will be able to compete with very large companies. The same is happening in the media industry, in the movie industry, in, in, in engineering industry, and other industries. So there is a lot of opportunity for the small to medium players to grow and grow dramatically. And when it comes to AI, I think this is the time where countries like UAE had, has a golden position. Other countries that want to move the same. You need to be very decisive, like currently how the UAE is in terms of its journey in AI and how fast it wants to move in AI. You need to be very clear how you're going to remove bureaucracies around data. If you don't start leveraging your data clearly, you're going to lose. If you don't prepare your data, whether you're a company or you're a country, you don't prepare your data to be ingested by AI. AI is not a magical one that needs data. If you start giving your data out to companies that will use your data to train their AI, you've just given out, I mean, if I take a good analogy, in, in, in the last 10, 20, 30 years, there has been countries that had oil, and countries that had oil or other resources or other minerals did very well. The new oil in the, in the AI world is data. Every country, every enterprise has data. Now, either you willingly give that data out to AI companies to train on, and hence you've given out your data oil well, or you use that for your advantage to improve it for your country. And I think that's where the opportunity is. I mean, it feels almost like the UAE here is being the world's sandbox for AI. Um, let's move on to one of the other announcements you've made this week in regards to you're going to welcome problems from other countries and try and solve them. So again, uh, in line with the spirit of this country, in line with the vision of the leadership of this country, uh, uh, stemming out of the vision of the president of the country, we are a country that is connected to the world. We are a country that's welcoming everyone and engaging with everyone. So the view has been is with the creation of ATRC and the momentum we've had in technology and how we're able now to go from zero to actually building technology that's already going into industry and going to multiple fields in, in the space. So we are today serving a lot of the UAE ecosystem, but we made an announcement today of launching a platform where we are opening up for a lot of the growth countries, a lot of the developing countries. I mean, anyone in general, but I think the growth and developing countries will benefit the most where we are saying, here is our 1-800 number. You can call us. Tell us what's the challenge that you have, whether in agriculture and medical and whatever it is. Maybe, maybe you have a lot of uncleaned water in certain areas and it's costing a lot to clean this water for drinkable part or whatever, whatever problem or challenge you have. We would listen to that challenge. We would see whether we can solve it in our research center or our ecosystem where we are connected to over 100 universities globally to work on whatever problem statements we have. And if we think we can do, we are willing to fund it ourselves, work on that problem statement, work with you to test it in your market, and see then how is the right way to deploy it in whatever means uh, or, or commercial structure we have. And for that, we've allocated another $200 million to be able to work on these problem statements, 
leveraging not just money, but leveraging money and our now technical capability where UAE is truly becoming a technology exporter and a connector to many parts of the world. And that's the role the leadership sees this country and to be able to really share what we do with many other players. So if anyone in the audience has any problems at all, please contact His Excellency because <laughs> he's got some money to solve it. Um, thank you very much. It was such a treat to meet you. Thank you. Excellent.